Hey there guys, Reckoning here, and welcome back to Let's Read Kata with Shoujo. I don't recall exactly what we did in the last episode, but I'm pretty sure we started Act 2. And I feel I'm ready to record this episode. I've had my frosted Rinny Wheats, and I'm ready to start this. God, that was a stupid joke. And nobody will probably catch it. We'll see. I wake up all sweaty as if I had run a half marathon in my sleep. Odd, I don't recall sleeping badly. It sends a little pang of worry through me. Wouldn't want to have my heart acting up without being able to notice it. Still, apart from this odd exhaustion right after waking up, I'm feeling just fine. My mouth is like sandpaper and I have nothing to drink, so I have to go all the way to the bathroom to take my bed meds. On impulse, I, just I decide to take a shower while I'm at it. While I'm in the shower, I make up my mind that this counts as morning exercise, if I properly compensate with a nice half-hour walk after school. Obviously, I wouldn't want to risk possible complications by going running now. Besides, Emmy will never know, and I think she's giving up on me in any case. Walking can be nice anyway, just to get to know the area. There's a big forest in the hills behind the school, or I could go down to the convenience store. While still dabbing the moisture off my skin, I set out to find my uniform. I quickly button up my shirt and pull on my pants before going outside. Normally during this time of year, I'd be eagerly awaiting summer vacation. Having only been in school for a little over a week, I don't really have that kind of feeling. I'm still savoring the school life and considering the sharp and awkward turn my life has taken. I haven't had the time to become preoccupied with getting free of it. Besides, once vacation is hit, it'll be, nice, it'll be a nice surprise for me if I'm not expecting, especially with the end of term exams looming ahead. At least I don't have any catching up to do with my studies. My diligence has finally paid off. I push myself past the boys gathered in the doorway and flop into my seat. I don't know what. I feel incredibly out of breath right now, and I have no idea why. It's weird. From the corner of my eye, I can see Shizune and Misha pause at unavoidably animated animated conversation and turn almost simultaneously in my direction. They clearly want something from me. I can tell from the way she's in a smiles. It's too obnoxiously bright to be sincere and too calculated to be spontaneous. Good morning. Her greeting is made of 100% sheer and bursting energy. Morning. I fail to put either of those into my response. You don't look very energetic. No wonder. I don't feel very energetic either. I think I didn't sleep well, but I'm not sure. She slaps me in the back and grins. Cheer up a bit, it's a great day! I catch Shizune's eyes. She has a strange, focused expression on her face, but she furrows her brow a little at direct eye contact and looks away. For a moment, I think that Shizune caught a glimpse of my worry somehow and is pondering how to respond, but then she quickly straightens her glasses and with them, her expression. Anyway, we were wondering if you were still interested in the stu student council position because we're going to make you an offer that you can't decline. Wait, what? I wasn't really interested in the first place. You're putting words in my mouth. Not as such. Wouldn't it be nice to hang out with us every day while also being useful to your school? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I kind of joined a club, so it'd actually be sort of hard for me to join the council too. Even if I wanted to. Which I don't, as I said. Is that so? Which club is it, Heejan? The art club. Shizune's eyes glint in a sinister way as she scowls at me. With the way she looks, I'll be expecting the art club to lose its funding before lunch break or the art teacher to mysteriously disappear from the face of the earth. Which, knowing the story, would not that would not be that bad of an idea. But I'll keep quiet about that for those who don't know. Because apparently people were upset that I spoiled things. Still really out of breath. I don't know why. Before she manages to comment, the teacher finally enters the classroom, getting Shizune and Misha off my back, and sending everyone rummaging their ba in their bags for books and pens. I did join the art club, but the first meeting didn't really boost my confidence. I'm not really sure what I'm doing it for. I wish I could draw like Rin, but I don't know what I could do, what I would do if I could. To what end would I use such a skill? I don't really know. Ignoring the teacher's sleep-inducing voice, better not be talking about motherfucking Muto. 
I opened my notebook to an empty page and pressed the needle-sharp graphite tip of the pencil onto it. What to draw? I can't really think of anything good to draw. As I hesitate and raise my hand, a meek black mark left on the previously blank paper seems aggravating. I can't even seem to get the starting line, let alone get started. Or get to the starting line, let alone get started. It's almost a physical feeling of being held back. Annoyingly, it reminds me of my failed attempt at jogging with Emmy. I look at the window in desperation. Right then, a small bird takes flight from one of the cherry trees that grow everywhere in the school grounds. I can't really see it clearly, and it's not like I can tell one tiny bird from another, but I pick it as my subject anyway. Conjuring up the image of a bird in my mind's eye, I turn my gaze back to the notebook and deliberately draw a thick line across the paper to get started. It seems to be, to be mocking me as I can't follow up right away. Still, it's a start. Getting started is good. I slowly sketch the picture on the notebook page, the image in my brain becoming clearer as the drawing takes shape. It's really nothing, just that nameless nothing bird on paper, but that's not important. My hesitation fades into the background along with the teacher's voice as I continue my struggle. The feathers form, form a simple pattern in my mind, but on paper it's a mess of too many rough lines despite my best efforts. I realize that I don't really know what a bird's wing should look like, even if I try to think about it. I even put the pencil down to close my eyes for a moment, trying to trace the shape of a wing in my mind. Why am I so out of breath? Actually, I think I have a reason. I think I know why that might be. And if the idea I have is true, then that is incredibly sad. Which is why I'm not going to say what I think it is. Being this serious about it all of a sudden makes me a little frustrated. Our class in middle school was the easy class in between exhausting subjects like math and Japanese. But there's this other side to art, the one that you see when you don't just fool around. It's almost like a completely different thing. Hee-chan? I look up to see two girls staring back at me. Misha and Shizune have carried their chairs to my desk and are now standing on my sides, looking at my drawing. How long have you been two been there? I think you need more practice. Shizune draws a few sharp signs in the air between herself and Misha. She can't agrees. I said the exact same thing yesterday, but why did it sound less condescending? You shouldn't judge before I'm finished. Besides, don't you know it's bad luck to see an unfinished piece of work? Misha cracks in exuberant laughter. What? Don't be silly. There's no way that could be true. Whatever. Shizune's eyebrows furrow dangerously and the movements of her hands become abrupt like the slashing of a knife. You should learn to take constructive criticism better. I would if you would actually offer some. I know I'm getting too defensive and that Shizune is taking advantage of, but I can't help it. What are you two doing here anyway? Nisha wags her finger admonishingly at my nose. Tsk tsk, Keychan. Were you not listening to the teacher at all? We have a group assignment now. I nod bleakly and let them take the lead. So, what do you think of the lesson for today? Not much of anything. I didn't listen to a word of it. Misha slaps her forehead and shakes her head theatrically. What are we going to do with you, Hee-chan? Luckily, Shizune and Misha together are more effective than three or four normal people, so I can mostly slack on the assignment. I try my best to offer at least some assistance, but I end up being mostly useless. The teacher keeps us in class five minutes past the lunch balls, but eventually it lets us off the hook. I quickly stuff my books in my bag while Shizune and Misha carry their chairs back to their own seats. The failure of a bird drawing ends up crumpled and stuffed in my pocket as I hurry outside. Is it really that bad of a drawing? Honestly? Okay, yeah, he's in his final year of high school. He should be drawing better and whatnot. Maybe I just think that, like, for an artist of my level, that's good. Probably because my mind's eye is blind. Legally. But it can see further than any mind's eye before it. So there's always that. After that morning class, and throughout the week, I keep bumping into Ren. Hello. 
This is somewhat natural as our classrooms are adjacent, but rather than just cross paths in the hallway like people regularly do, we seem to pause at the sight of each other. We invariably end up talking a little bit, or just silently, silently hanging out together. I think I'm getting used to being quiet in Rin's company, as it doesn't feel as awkward anymore. I am, by na nature, somewhat introverted like her, so we fit together well. I think it's actually an anomaly for someone in school to be so quiet. Most people here seem to love socializing. It's something that I've noticed already, even though I haven't been here very long. People here talk a lot, and they talk all the time. It's a rare case when they see one sit someone sitting alone, just spacing out or whatever. Obviously, there are people like that here too, that Hanukkah girl and myself, just to name two from my own class. But overall, they are a minority. At any rate, I wouldn't exactly call what Ren and I do socializing either. But it's something at least. These occurrences themselves don't bother me, but the fact that they happen at all does. I'd hesitate to say that we are drawn together by something, but we certainly act as if we were. However, the sense of a budding friendship is completely wrecked every time a friend opens her mouth. Can I listen to your heartbeat? She says this, or something else about it is outrageous. Or something else about as outrageous. And I have to fend off whatever nonsense her mind has cooked up during the preceding class of a subject that she is not interested in. It seems that Ren has taken a shine to my heart condition as some kind of an extension of her interest in the otter disability that people have here, and the consequences of said affliction. As I stand in front of her for a second too long, looking as flummoxed as I am, she concludes it necessary to further classify her, clarify her quest. I know I can, but I mean, will you let me? Why? Do I need a reason? I'm usually pretty bad at these reasons. Not per se, but if you want to do it, you probably do have a reason. That's kind of clever. You're smarter than you look. Also, I'd rather you not. I think these things should be private. Private. I get it. I can tell you something, though, if it amuses you. Pretty sure it will. My heartbeat does sound very weird because of the, you know, condition. And I hear it. All the time. So you're paranoid. It's not a question. It's a statement. No, I'm not paranoid. The doctor said that the abnormal attention to the heartbeat is a common symptom of my condition. So for you, it's normal to be paranoid. It's not a question either. One could also say that me being like this in the first place isn't normal either, but what the heck. Paranoia fits me fine. I don't think it's something that can actually fit anywhere or anywhere. You know, I had an orange today for breakfast. How was it? I'm vaguely proud of myself, managing to keep up with Brent's sudden change of the topic. Excellent. I don't remember when I last ate an orange, because it's a new to peel one. Done the list of things I want to work properly. How come you ate one then? Annie had some, so she peeled one for me. Good for you. Brent stretches a back and yawn, and says nothing further. She throws me a glance from the corner of her eye while she watches people pass by, but I couldn't say why. I realize, though, I realize, though, this is the first time I've actually talked naturally about my condition with anyone. In a way. A group of boys walk past us from classroom, but she doesn't pay them any mind. They pay none to her, either. My mind wanders off, spurred by the silence. Maybe I should have let her listen to my heart. It's not like it matters. Nothing really matters that much at the end of the day. I start feeling depressed for no reason again. It's like a tidal wave out of nowhere rolling over my consciousness, submerging me into water. I feel a sigh coming out of my mouth, and I turn away from Rin, pretending to read a poster on the wall. It's an advertisement for the school festival, promoting an event about almost a week past. The difference between me and Rin is that I'll likely not, I'll more than, more likely than not, that I'll be more likely than not dead before turning 30, while she can't eat oranges without help. I can't decide which one of us is worse off. I can't fucking breathe! Why is this? The past ten episodes I've had no trouble catching my breath. Why is it now? Give me a minute. Alright, I think I'm good now. Hopefully. So, where was I? I try to grasp the passing of time, but it seems hard. I'm still used to the rhythm of the hospital, where triviality such as the day of the week or time of day didn't really matter. Everything was the same, no matter what. 
Rediscovering the significance of time is an oddly disorienting experience, and I find myself enjoying the fact that I can categorize events in this fashion. The relevancy of a ticking clock is surprisingly delightful, and I start and I decide to start wearing an analog wristwatch, something I didn't used to do before. When I finally ask Rin on Thursday about something that's been bothering me for the entire week, it's already lunchtime. The time is somewhere between 11.06 and 11.07, as my watch doesn't have a hand to show seconds. It's the old-fashioned kind with a black leather strap and titanium casing. It doesn't look flashy, but a wristwatch doesn't need to. Hey. Remember that sketch you made of me? He said it looked grim and gloomy or something. I'd like to know what you meant by that. She gives me a weird look and tilts her head a few degrees to the left, but doesn't say anything for a while. Well, you see, we've known each other for two weeks and I haven't, I haven't seen you smile even once. Her striking observation gives me pause. Have I stopped smiling? I have to take what she says as truth. She has no reason to lie. Something about the way she puts it annoys me. I frown at Rin, then try to correct my expression to look somewhat less depressed. I haven't been in the cheeriest of moods during the past few months or so, if this is true. Does it show so much that someone like Rin can tell after so little contact with me? Should I try to smile more at Rin? Maybe she could appreciate it having such a neutral face herself almost all the time. Have I really stopped smiling? I see. Should I smile more? I don't mind either way. Be as you are, you can't help being just sour anyway. But it bothers you. I just noticed it, that's all. Amy skips along the hallway, jumps to a sharp stop when she reaches us and lightly pats her in the shoulder. Ready for lunch? Depends on what lunch is today. And that's too much. Ever again, that. Let's go anyway. I'm starving. As they're about to depart, Amy turns her head turns from her friend to me, seemingly as an afterthought, and smiles charmingly. By the way, Hisao, her tone is way too sweet and soft to be sincere. I can sense the trap about to be sprung on me by this miniature health devil. I know what she's about to say even before she continues because I've been trying to avoid her all week. I still haven't seen you at the track this entire week. Maybe I've been there when you haven't. That's impossible, I'm there all the time. But you sleep and go to class. I do this at the same time as you do. Yeah, I know, I know. I just I haven't been able to pick myself up. Don't wrap me out to the nurse, okay? Running just isn't my thing, and I haven't come up with a good alternative. Why don't you come to the track meet this weekend? Maybe you'll get inspired. Track meet? Yeah, people from a few other schools can come here for friendly track and field action. It's on Sunday afternoon. Can't think of any reason not to go. Sure, I'll come and cheer for you. Guess you'll be running? Of course, you'll get to see me beat them all. But bye now. If I don't get something to eat, I'll die. See you later. Bye, Ren. I promise I'll, sm I promise I'll smile next time. I call after her as a bit of an afterthought. Afterward, I feel embarrassed about it, and I wonder why I said anything at all. That night, when I'm doubly certain Kenji won't be barging in the bathroom, I look in the mirror and smile at my reflection. The me in the mirror smiling at me in the bathroom looks awfully fake. I believe that we're getting closer and closer to a part where Hasao realizes that something needs to change. I think that's something I can spoil. And not have people beating down my door like, Oh, you spoiled a part of the story! And then talking about it on Reddit. And thinking it won't get back to me. Anyway, having exhausted the books Kenji lent me in just a few nights, I go back to the library, deeming it a safer alternative for getting my reading fix. I return the books he has stolen while I'm at it, to Yuko's delight. I don't tell her where I got them, though. Wow, you sure read a lot, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, I do. Even I think it's weird. I think I might have a reading problem. Maybe I'm a junkie. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. It's not weird at all, and being addicted to reading is a lot better than being addicted to, to something else. Yeah, I know. It was a joke. I smile at her reassuringly and drop the books on the counter so Yuko could check them out. I feel tired, so I sit down in the vacant chair in front of the desk. While Yuko goes through the modest pile of reading material I found, I let my gaze wander around the library. At the tables, a pair of girls is chattering in hushed tones rather than working on their homework. 
The short-haired one notices me looking in their direction and waves at me. When I raise my hand back, they glance at each other and giggle in unison. I'm not sure how I should feel about that, so I decided it's a good thing. The one who waved at me has a horrible case of epilepsy. I saw her having an attack a few days ago. One of the most disturbing and scary things I've seen in a very long time. Yep, there she is, happily chirping away, but whatever, as if she doesn't have a care in the world. No, this school is really something else. Yuko raises her eyes from the book she was going through, slightly startled. She adjusts her glasses and puts on a nervous, confused smile. What do you mean? I don't really know how to explain it. It's just that everyone's so... active, or... Where should I put it? It's not just a festival thing, I think, even though I haven't been here that long, but it's everything. People talk more, work harder, and just are more than in any other school I've seen before. I'm struggling for words, but it feels like I'm speaking honestly. The school feels so alive. I don't see how picking it makes me feel like I'm stuck is a good choice. Because you would think a school feeling actually alive would be something refreshing. Wouldn't that make sense? I mean, nowadays you go to a school and you just get the feeling everybody's just shuffling through the daily trials just because, well, they're kind of being forced to. So, everybody actually looking like they're excited about something and looking like they actually feel alive. It's a, it's a good change of pace. It's refreshing. So, we're going to cope with it's refreshing. Sure, there were some people like this in my old school, too, but not as many. And it feels more intense somehow. I think if I had to pin it down to one thing, the students here really appreciate going to school. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, me neither. Suddenly I realize that I've just been babbling my thoughts to Yuko out of the blue. She's a bit of a jumpy person, so I fear I might have made a bad impression. She's looking at me with what I hope is curiosity rather than horror, so I figure she's alright. Sorry for suddenly talking about weird stuff like this. I didn't mean to trouble you. Oh no, it's not troubling. I'm happy to listen if you feel like talking. It makes me feel a little reliable, too. Yuko smiles sweetly and a little bit ironically at that. I respond with a thankful smile of my own. As she pushes the neat stack of books across the counter, I stand up and gather them in my, ar gather them in my arms. Here you are. Thank you. I guess we mean... We'll be meeting each other again. Please come here anytime. Yuko's kindness is heartwarming. You can count on it. See you later. It's a certain scene. It's probably in another episode or two, but I think it's really well written. But again, that's spoiling. People don't like it when you spoil it. The morning of the track meet greets me with a brilliant sunshine from the with a brilliant sunshine from the crystal blue sky. While I leisurely stroll towards the track, I decide this is a good sign. Of what I'm not sure. This event isn't ex as exciting for me as it seems to be for a large portion of the student body. Even less interested in watching sports than and participating, but cheering, cheering for Emmy is a good cause. I'm not expecting this to be any sort of amazing and spectacular experience, but it can't hurt. I'd probably be spending those time time reading while keeping in my room otherwise. When I approach the, the bleachers, I spot Rin emerging from the crowd right before she spots me. You came. Of course. I said I would, didn't I? That doesn't necessarily imply that you had to follow through. Lots of people say things and don't mean them. Well, I don't. Rin shrugs. Seemingly bored with our conversation, she turns on her heel and heads back to the stands. So, are you excited about this? Not really. Me neither. And why did you come? Why did you? She doesn't reply at all, so I decide not to either. Went into the bleachers and Rin nods upwards. Up there. Rin leads the way, and soon we've settled down on an almost empty bench. There's an older woman sitting next to Rin, someone's mother, I assume. She's got rather long hair done up in a braid. On seeing Rin, she gives an oddly familiar seeming grin. Seeming grin. What was her voice? Fuck. Easily been a year and a half since I've heard this. At least. Fuck, what is it? Ah. Uh, 
Well, this is interesting. I thought you went to get a snack, not a boy. Huh? This is no good. The woman laughs at Ren and shakes her head, apparently unable to find a comeback for that. I know the feeling. Well, I suppose you've always been one to go out for one thing and bring back another. But I'm being rude. I haven't introduced myself. I'm Miko Iwazaki. I'm sure that you, if you know this girl, you at least have met my daughter, too. Pleased to meet you. Well, that explains it. She's like a taller, older, more motherly Annie. Apart from her hair being somewhat darker than her daughter's, there's really no mistaking the resemblance. Sorry, I'm Hasao. Hasao Nakai. Nice to meet you. I'm Rin Tezuka. Mrs. Abarazaki laughs again. She really does resemble her offspring. And then leans back a little on her seat and raises an eyebrow. So, now that we know, all know each other, how long have you, been, you and Rin been dating? My response consists of silence as my brain suddenly lurches into gear. Just before I can begin to utter a hastily babbled explanation, Emmy's mother bursts into laughter again. Ha! You're a blusher, aren't you? I don't know if there's any way to keep my dignity in this situation, so I settle for a mumbled response. We're not... I know, but it's funny to watch you squirm. I'm sorry. Forgive an old woman her amusements. She chuckles again to herself. Old woman? She sure doesn't look that old to me. I suppose I can let it go. How kind of you. It's starting. I direct my attention to the track where they're preparing for the first sprint. It looks like the 400 meter dash. Oh, what, it can't be like yards or something? Oh, that's right, because nobody else uses the, 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 the... What do we even call that system over here? Is it like the customary system? Because really, once you get into math classes, they're like, it, we're not going to tell you what that's actually called because the you know, metric system is so much easier to work with. Because it is. You know, base 10, much easier. Much easier to, to use in physical sciences, and chemistry, and physics. Don't want to be used in feet and inches in physics. Much easier to use meters, kilometers, you know, picometers, nanometers, stuff like that. It's much easier. Much easier. My eyes scan the runners before finding Emmy. She's smiling with an almost cocky look on her face. The starter raises his pistol. Emmy explodes off the block, disappearing from the starting line in a blur. It's amazing. Even as the other sprinters converge on the lanes closest to the inside line, Emmy surges to the front of the pack. By the time she runs the final turn, a few of the other runners have caught up with her. But she puts on a final burst of speed that leaves them at least a half second behind. Mrs. Abarazaki whoops and shouts, applauding wildly and generally looking like any other par parent cheering on their child. Emmy bounds off the track, looking pleased with herself. I cheer right, right along with the rest of them. The announcer, sounding suspiciously like Misha, gleefully gives the results. I think she's gotten faster since last time. That was incredible. Mrs. Abarazaki grins proudly. Emmy's a heck of a runner. We fall silent as the next event prepares to start. I'm surprised to see Emmy striding out on the track again. Wait, didn't she just run? Emmy's mother nods. Yes, but she runs multiple events for the team, especially the sprints. It's a lot of running, but Emmy can handle it. From the looks of things, she's alright. She's right. Emmy doesn't appear to be tired as if she hadn't run the as if she hadn't run the previous event at all. If not for the sweat visible on her shirt, you'd never know. Which event is this? It's the two hundred meter dash. She do this one, the one hundred meter, and the relay. I see. Once again, the pistol sounds, and once again, Emmy flies off the clock. A thumping sound draws my attention away from the race. It's Brynn's foot. She seems completely absorbed in the race. Emmy smells the cheers again, and I assume that the race is over. Sprints don't seem to me like they take very long to complete. Your foot. Mm hmm? Your foot was bouncing on the bleachers. Oh. You seem pretty into this stuff. I'm surprised. I thought you said you wouldn't be thought you said this wouldn't be exciting. Hmm, I suppose you're right. It's not that interesting. But I'm watching Emmy with this board. I don't follow. Emmy's the most Emmy when she runs. You don't get to see Emmy and her Emmy is very often. But here, you can. See? She 
directs my attention to the track again where the 100 meter dash is about to start. I watch Emmy closely. As she gets into the start, onto the start of blocks, her whole body seems to relax, but it's a false relaxation. I can see that she's actually like a coiled spring. As the starter tells everyone to get set, her head snaps up and her eyes narrow slightly. Her mouth curls upward in what could be a grin and it could be a growl. When the pistol goes off, it's like it's as if she's been unleashed from a cage, like she was always moving at this blinding speed. But we couldn't see it because couldn't see it happening until the starter's, pis, starter's pistol dispelled the illusion of motionlessness. As soon as she crossed the finish line, the fierce look was replaced by a normal grin. The conquering general returning to his farm. Amazing. She's really amazing. Never seen any, never seen someone move that fast. Well, don't look at me. I'm far too relaxed to run that fast. No, I think Emmy's prowess all, all came from her father's side. At the mention of Emmy's father, Mrs. Aburazaki looks wistful, almost sad. He got her into running, you know. Ah, really? I didn't know that. I leave it at that and don't say anything for a little while. I get the feeling this is something personal I shouldn't ask about. A beeping noise suddenly emanates from Mrs. Aburazaki's pocket. Reaching into it, she pulls out a cell phone and looks at it. Honestly, text messages? What is he, 16? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I've got to go meet up with a friend of mine. Will you tell me I'm very proud of her and I'll call her later tonight? Of course. And since there's been a transition of some sort, we'll end the video off here. And at least I'm not short of breath and you know, suffocating. So that's always a good thing. But um, in the next episode, I have a feeling I know what we're going to do. I have a slight idea of what's going to happen. But as for that scene I was talking about before, that'll probably be the following episode. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm reckoning you are the viewer, and I may have noted, I may have stated this before, but I honestly don't like including the whole, oh, if you like this video, you know, click the thumbs up, and, you know, put a comment down, you know, um, favorite if you want to, because it, it just feels like you're being a whore, and I don't want, I don't want to stoop to that level. But honestly, I'm being genuine here. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, favorite it if you really did, you know, really like the episode. Um, comment if you so choose to. It doesn't really affect me either way. Um, share it if you so choose to. Though it seems with the new with Google Plus it shares anyway, so I guess I can start leaving that part out. Um, if you want to see more videos from me and keep up to date on what I post, then I would suggest you subscribe, but by all means, you do not need to. And, um, so yeah, of course, I'm reckoning you, the viewer, all of that stuff, and until next time, keep on painting.